Is the Dino 308 GT4 value economy dependent or is this a future blue chip collectible? Tune in to see what these two nerds think. Get those nerds! All right, you know what that sound means? It's, uh, that sound means it's time for a brand new Bid Nerds. It's Bid Nerd time! Michael Woo! Deeb in San Francisco. I'm in Las Vegas. My name is John Polnick. Uh, how you guys doing out there? Are you excited for Cars Un Cafe in San Francisco? To our Bay Area friends, Michael Deeb here Bay is going Area. to host a Cars Un Cafe, the first Cars Un Cafe, one of many to come. Uh, the monthly show that we do here in Las Vegas, the last Sunday of the month in the Arts District, uh, will be duplicated in San Francisco starting this uh, this month, what's going on? Yeah. Do you tell me about it. Yeah, Sunday, Sunday the 30th at 340 Industrial Way in Brisbane, California. Our host facility, the Pit Stop Automotive, is going to open their doors and allow us to see some of the cars that they have in there in the shop, some of the cars that will be going to Pebble Beach, um, and, of course, use the facilities and stuff. It should be a fantastic backdrop uh, to kick off Cars Und Cafe San Francisco um, and with a little luck, then uh, we might roll out. John's got, uh, you know, the mastermind has got some things. Maybe we wind up in the uh, Pacific Northwest and maybe way out on the East Coast. So, um, yeah, please, if you're in Northern California and looking for something to do on Sunday morning, the 30th of July, please come to Brisbane. It's it's a stone's throw from the Cow Palace in Brisbane, right off Bayshore Boulevard. We'll be there from 7 to 11 a.m. with coffee and donuts and really cool air-cooled cars. Please come by and join us. We'd love to see you there. He did say the Cow Palace, for those of you who are not Bay Area uh, familiar. That is an actual place. Um, Yeah, no, we are super stoked. Uh, It's so stoked that uh, I'll be coming out. Uh, Some of us from Las Vegas are going to be coming out to check out the San Francisco version, uh, inaugural version. So uh, I'm looking forward to cooling off at Cars and Cafe in San Francisco. Maybe our friends from God and Porsche and God and Classic will lend us a car to drive Ooh. out to oh, oh, oh. Uh, San Francisco. I got to hit them yeah. up and see if that, that could possibly happen. Uh, yeah. Something with air conditioning. Cause my classic Porsches don't have that. I don't know. My, my 964 has air conditioning, um, but it needs a condenser. So I'm probably going to, maybe I'll get that done before then. Uh, maybe just yeah. drive that out. I don't know. We'll see. Drive, drive it out in the middle of the night. And then when you get here, you won't need it. And yeah, then drive it true. home in the middle of the night. <laughs> that might be a thing. There's a very real yeah. possibility. Uh, all right. For those of you who are new to the channel, uh, hopefully by the time you see this episode, we will have reached a thousand subscribers. That's a big deal for us. Um, and uh, if you're new to the nerd herd, what we do is we find the most interesting car from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. We have a conversation about that car and then we predict what's going to happen with that car's auction then it gets even more interesting because we go into the future and we show you on the second half of the show make sure you stick around to the end we will show you what actually happened with that car's auction we will reconcile our poor predictions with the actual results uh and you can play along it's like the price is right Plug in your predictions when we do at the same time in the comments below, and then you can go into the future and see if uh, you're better at this than we are. Play along. Lots of fun. All right, Michael Deeb, what is today's most interesting car of the day? John, I love it when I learn stuff about cars, and I have been all over 308 GT4s this summer as um, the, the, the car that started my car story. Uh, my dad's good friend had a 308 GT4 Dino. That car actually came up for sale recently, and our good friend Yuri bought it. Um, so the car is remains here in San Francisco, and I got to see it the other day. And it just brings back tons and tons of memories. It's a 1975. And then just this last weekend, a 1975 came up on Craigslist. I emailed the guy. The guy emailed me back. It went to my spam. Before I got out to look at it, somebody else looked at it and put a deposit on it. And so I missed that car for what would have been a steal of a price. So I am still thinking I hey, want to own. Hey, hold on. Who gave yeah. you the tip that that car was available? You did. That's right. Thanks for giving me yeah. credit. Jeez. Yeah. Shoot, you did. Yeah, absolutely. You take care of me all the time. So anyways, I missed that car and I'm embarrassed that I did. So I saw this car and I just want to cover it because I can't remember the last time we covered a GT4 Dino. This one looks pretty nice. It's a 1974 Ferrari Dino 308 GT4 on bring a trailer out of james island south carolina 
The car is showing 4,400 kilometers, which is true mileage unknown. It's probably 104,000 kilometers, um, which is still pretty low miles. The car, um, the, the cars didn't come to the U.S. until 1975. So this car is a European market. Um, it was, um, it looks like it was sold new in Belgium. And then it looks like in 2018, the car uh, had the motor rebuilt in the Netherlands. And uh, work also consisted of uh, repainting the car in its original Giallo Modena uh, car. And then the they reupholstered the cabin. So it's got black leather and cloth seats in this, in this uh, black leather and cloth seat centers, which is really cool. So one of the things I learned is this, JP. 74s and 75s are series ones and those cars make 255 horsepower um even though we had uh different uh smogs and emission things in the united states the u.s cars that came uh here in 1975 75 are are series ones and series ones are the same all the way around so our cars are 255 horsepower even though all the marketing material says that they were um, listed as 240. So in, in uh, 1976, and from then forward, we got Series 2 cars, um, which had uh, much bigger catalytic converters, and I don't think they were as high a compression a motor in the first place. And those cars all made, like, I think 235 horsepower. So this car being a European market is for sure a Series 1 with the, with the robust 255 horsepower motor. It's got young paint, um, all the services are up to date and the car is titled in South Carolina. So I'm all over this thing and I'm thinking, man, this would be a great way to steal one and maybe get one of the better examples. So I was looking on the sort of the price guides and it's interesting to note JP that, um, they say add $3,500 for a sunroof on a Ferrari 308 GT4. And I would actually suggest that you would add $3,500 if it didn't have a sunroof. Um, I would prefer mine without one. I can't believe that they do a value add for the sunroof. I think that's incorrect. But there is something that's interesting here. And they say add 50% for a Eurospec example, which I've never seen on Haggerty's price guide before. And I'm like, add man. 50%? 50% for Eurospec. Yeah. So this car at 45 oh. grand excellent condition for one of these is around 90,000 bucks. They're saying add another 45 if it's a Euro spec. And what I think they really mean to qualify that read between the lines is what I think they're saying is for a series one, because even in American 75 is series one specification with the exception of the bumpers, of course, which are, which are a big drawback. So maybe it really does have to be Euro spec. This one's Euro spec to the motor and to the bumpers, these tiny little Euro bumpers really give you a good look at that uh, Bertoni designed um, uh, bodywork. But um, the the American bumpers are atrocious. But I I found that really interesting. Fifty percent for Euro spec on almost all other cars. If it's Euro spec, it's worth less. But in in this particular case, they're saying that it's worth more, and I I love that. But it also might price it out of the market for me. So JP. Um, all of that I found fascinating. The car is beautiful in yellow black. Um, if I own it, I would change to a, a slightly different, a five star wheel that's an inch wider. And I would put on either a chrome mirror or a black mirror. I get rid of the monochromatic mirrors. But other than that, I would totally rock a bright yellow GT4 Dino. I send it to you. Would you, would this car look absolutely stunning parked next to your back date with similar horsepower and performance and handling? Uh, I love this car. I, I've never driven one. Uh, I've always loved the way they look. Um, this is definitely my style of Ferrari. I mean, yeah. you know, they're not they're not cheap uh and of course with any old ferrari you're talking about you know maintenance is always something that you really have to be worried about this particular car looks like it was completely restored like engine rebuild yeah. and everything so yeah. i feel like you could be pretty comfortable buying and driving something like this uh and yeah um you wouldn't need a lot of room in a garage to find space for it and the euro look on that with those with basically no bumpers this is just such a sick looking car 
Um, <laughs> and I think if I ever do get a Ferrari, it's probably going to be one of these. Uh, one of these or a 348, I think, are probably maybe in my future. Um, yeah. But I, I can't think of any other Ferrari that I'd really ever plunk down the money for. Um, nor, you know, there are other Ferraris that I certainly want, but probably you're going to out, be outside of my reach. I think a car like this could conceivably happen. Um, I, w- the one that I sent you uh, on Craigslist, was that a European one or was that a Yeah, American it was one? a... It was an American 75, so it was also a Series 1. Hmm. Ironically, the guy who bought it here in the Bay Area had purchased the car on Bring a Trailer in, like, January of 2021 uh, or sometime in 2021. We had teed that car up to do the show, but for whatever reason, we inexplicably didn't record that week, and so that car had come to close before we got back to into the studio to do another show. So we had that car lined up to go. He bought the car for forty nine thousand dollars in twenty twenty one, and he brought it back to market on Craigslist for fifty five thousand bucks. And I'm telling you, I think that he was leaving thirty thousand dollars on the table, if not more. The car looked to be really nice. It was bright red with boxer black boxer trim and tan interior. Um, it probably needed a drive belt, but like, so what? Like I just, like that car looked really nice. It looked to be in really good driver condition. And I'm sorry I didn't get over there to see it sooner. Uh, I, I missed it by just a couple of hours. So really, really nice well, car. So that begs the question then, if you think that one was worth somewhere in the $80,000 range, uh, this yeah. one, complete rebuild, complete restoration, ready to go, no maintenance needed. Um, does that does the restoration help the value of this or does it bring it down? Uh, what's the number? Yeah, so I, I think it should. The, the only thing I think that might hurt this car is this. I think... In the American Ferrari psyche, they built this car from like 75 to 79, and that's incorrect. They built them in Europe for a year, for 1974, prior to bringing them stateside, and that's what this is. So I think some people might look at it and go, oh, that's a European car. And like I said, on most Ferraris, you want to stay away from the European examples. They're harder to register and bring into your state and all that sort of thing, and that's just not the case here. So um, so that that might hold it back just this weird perception of a Euro and not good enough because it's not the American. Uh, but on the contrary, this car being, um, you know, rebodied and repainted, uh, the interior redone and the motors, the maintenance is up there and it's on a domestic title and it's a true series one with the more attractive European bumpers. I actually think this car is going to do well. So I think the value is between 120 and 130,000 all day long. I wouldn't be surprised if it brought more, but I'm going to say yellow is a slightly polarizing color. We went over that the other day on a, on a 993. Um, and I, that same thing could happen here. The Euro and the, and the color of the paint might just prevent it from reaching 140, 150. So I'm going to give it back to you, JP, at just a complete fun number, $123,000, and it sells. And I just think that that's, that's the right range for this car. It could do a little bit more. I don't expect it to do a lot less. If this car were to land under a hundred grand, I have to tell you, I'd probably rather own this than the BMW that might be my dad's. But um, you know, we'll see. I, I wish I could buy both cars. I'll have to go check my lottery numbers before I, I log on to bid. But if I my numbers come in, I'll take them. I'll take them both home. But but if be choosing between the two, I'd just rather drive this car. Yeah. But I'd rather own my dad's old BMW. But but this car could go for a little bit more money. John, I send it back to you at $123,000. Well, I think yellow is definitely a color that you're right. Um, it's polarizing is the correct word. This The color of this one is closer to your sweatshirt uh, than that 911 we were talking about, that 993, that, which is that kind yeah. of Tweety Bird canary yellow that I think yeah. is just terrible, and hardly anyone likes that color. If that particular 993 that we were talking about in canary yellow it's which is kind of like pastel um if that were yeah. fly yellow or this yellow this modena yellow or whatever you're talking yeah. about i think it's a different yeah. story um so that i don't know um but i am going to park it underneath you just a little bit i'm going to say uh 115 i think things are coming I, I i think we are in the right spot in um you know this summer i think in the next uh, you know four weeks are probably going to be uh, higher numbers than we're going to see in the fall. I think prices will probably start to, I, I think the hockey puck is bouncing along the bottom. And I think yeah. right now we're in slightly a little blip up. Um, but I don't think that brings, so I just, I don't know. I mean, 
to me, this car, when most of them are going for, you know, 50 and $80,000, um, I don't know. The restoration, I know how Ferrari people are. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like there's a ton of, you know, uh, liquidity floating around out there that people can just willy nilly throw an extra hundred or hundred fifty thousand dollars at something. Yeah. So people are going to be a little bit more careful uh, when they're purchasing something like this. And I think there's a lot of competition. I mean, a hundred grand. Um, there's a lot of Porsches that you can get out there that I think that are probably going to be more reliable um, and uh, yeah. more well known and have a broader market and be safe. Ergo, being safer investments. I mean, would you yeah. rather put $120,000 in one of these or say a 930 Turbo or even an M491, you know, Coupe or something like that, which is about the same yeah. amount of money? Yeah. Well, it looks like GT4s are really on the move, which is interesting. Yeah. You know, 308s have vacillated back and forth between being kind of expensive and kind of affordable. Um, but the maintenance is high and they're not great driving cars. They're just iconic, like that Trans Am we covered a while ago. Um, you know, but that this car, car has isn't the, iconic at all, right? This isn't car, that, this yeah. car isn't. But for the money, it's a, it's the one car from that era from Ferrari that could keep up with a, a, a road full of 911s, uh, because the geometry is different and the motor is really good and the pop-up headlights are cool and, and it's just a yeah, lot of equipment. So I guess the question is, how many people know that, right? I mean, no, not nobody. That's why these cars have been. You know, everybody thought this was the redheaded stepchild, yeah. the Bertone designed Ferrari that nobody wanted. And now they're having their moment. So where would I rather park my money? These cars seem to be on the move. Although I always think an M four nine one is is a great place to put your money. Um, the other car, since we're talking about that broad scope, um, would be a mid year Carrera. A real mid year Carrera would be another good place to invest around $100,000, $120,000 if I had it. So any one of those three kind of cars, I think the future is really good. I would call them, you know, maybe not an A-plus investment, but certainly a B investment, really good, you know, not yeah. secondary, but like a, on a scale of one to five, you know, be a four, you know? And like so. we always say, if the economy goes to hell and the apocalypse happens, at least you'll have a cool car to have fun in and drive yeah. around. Uh, it feels like the apocalypse here in Las Vegas. Uh, it, right now <laughs> it's so hot. It's like the uh, it's like, like everyone else in the Midwest has to put their air cooled cars away for you know three months in the winter time, but we're in that. I, I look at this the pictures of the interior of this car and I just want to get in it and drive it around, but then I realize that would be unpleasant here, um, you know. So, it, but it, pretty much everywhere else in the country, it'd be awesome. So I'll be watching this car. Um, good luck to everyone putting in your bids right now. See if you're better at this than we are, and let's find out uh, right now. Hey, guys, I got to tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a Classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and Save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the Classic Porsche you're looking for, God and Porsche of Las Vegas. We are back to the future here to resolve the results of this little yellow Ferrari. Michael D wore a matching hoodie just to make sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Michael Deeb, uh, congrats on the inaugural Cars Un Cafe in San Francisco. Uh, Yuri, your partner there, your cohort, you're in cahoots, uh, owns yeah. one of these. And uh, I didn't get to ride in it or anything, mm -hmm. but I got to drive, I got to ride in a car behind it. It sure sounded awesome. Uh, so yeah. now I really want one of these. Michael Deeb, what <laughs> happened with this yeah. little yellow Ferrari? First of all, John, thank you very much. You and Chef flying out from Vegas to um, help host and and produce the first ever Cars und Cafe in San Francisco, like yes. Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, um, was an amazing success. Thank you, JP. Couldn't have done it without you. Um, certainly wouldn't have done it without you. So it was uh, it was really fun, really awesome, and and it seemed like everybody that was there is already looking ahead and looking forward to the next one, which will be 
on Sunday, the 27th of August, which uh, nice. we're looking forward to already. So, yes, Yuri Sanak has brought um, a car just like this. He bought a 75 308 GT4 Dino, which um, is a Series 1 car, which is really cool. 255 horsepower, whereas all the U.S. spec cars from 76 on only made 240. Uh, so really neat car. This 74 is a true Euro car, w- which even has the Euro bumpers and like the cloth seat inserts. This car looks really neat. Um, sitting in these photos on Bring a Trailer out of James Island, South Carolina, in a very, not rare because you don't see uh, yellow Ferraris, but rare in that I c- really don't remember seeing very many yellow GT4 Dinos. Um, I think that is what's kind of rare. Um, so this car is pretty cool, JP. I thought because it was a Series 1 and because Haggerty said that there's a 50% value add if it's a Euro specification car, that this car would easily get to my number of 123000 And when you gave your bid at $114,000, I started to snicker because I thought I had this one in the bag. Well, our car only made it to $87,000, but that's not the surprising part. The surprising part is that it sold for that number, $87,000, and it sold on BAT. And now I'm kind of ticked off I didn't buy it myself. Um, certainly, I, I'm i trying to think if I could scratch together the money to buy my dad's old BMW back, the car we covered earlier in the week. Uh, but this car only got 13 bids. It closed on Sunday. Do you think that had anything to do with it? It's not football season, not even by a stretch, but it is summer vacation. Get the kids out of town before they go back to school, you know, next month or this month. That by the time you're watching this, um, you know, I, JP, I did, this car didn't even make a hundred grand. I a, a Euro spec, beautiful bumpers. It's a looker in yellow. Maybe not my favorite color. I don't know that I'd really want to own a yellow one. I. I kind of miss me with yellow I'd, I'd probably take it in any other color but um 87 jp i just i can't stop thinking that somebody sort of stole this car this car's already been refurbished there's photos of the car being you know the bodywork and the paint beautifully put together brought here to the united states it's sitting on a south carolina title so it'd be easy to finance like i mean my god what more could you ask for you know yuri has a car it's probably a little nicer than this because it's an original condition car, but it's a U.S. spec car. That was $150,000 on BAT. So this car at eighty seven, dollars um, I, I wonder if the guy who bid $87,000 actually thought he was going to get it. You know what I mean? Surprise. Like, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. Did he go eighty seven and then watch the clock go down and then all of a sudden he had that moment like, shit, I got to tell my wife? Because <laughs> I've been through that one. Yeah. Um... <laughs> so I don't know. I'm surprised. I think this got very well bought. Uh, I'm a little jealous it's not mine. Um, th- there you go, JP. Take it away. Well, yeah, but I mean, we've seen a few of these around lately. We've seen, like, there was one on the classifieds not that long ago that went. Yeah. Or significantly less than this one. Granted, it right. wasn't as nice as this one, but I mean, I think this is just a car that's not a blue chip car, and we've been talking about that for a while now. That's kind of been a theme. The cars that are still bringing big money, and in some cases, record money, are usually yeah. the cars that are as original as possible and are blue chip, and that are, you know, frankly, cars that people know and want, right? You know, 911 SCs uh, still keep going up and up and up for some reason. Um, even though that's not a terribly uncommon car or a car that's hard to find, it's yeah. just that's what people know what it is. People know what that is. I, I, you drive this down the road, no one's going to know what this car is. They're going to know it's neat. Uh, yeah. They're going to use that an old Lambo, is that an old Ferrari, is that an old Maserati, is that an old Fiat? I mean, I think probably most people would guess that this was a Fiat before they would guess that it's. I- I, I, yeah, with the Bertoni tie-in, if yeah. you kind of know Italian cars, I think you're, if you didn't know what it was, I think your first guess would be a Lamborghini. I guess, yeah. I yeah. mean, but if you don't, I mean, that's a, that, you're kind of making my point. I mean, who knows? Yeah. If you yeah. know cars, if you don't know cars, Bertoni, if Bertoni, if you never, if you think that's a type of pasta, um, you know, you're <laughs> definitely not going to know what the heck this is, right? I'll take the yeah. Bertoni and meat sauce is not something it, that is isn't, on your menu. Is it a, isn't a Bertoni when you take the old pizza dough and you cut it into four little pieces yeah. and you throw it in canola oil and shake it with powdered sugar? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's what yeah. that is. Uh, thanks. That's a Bertoni. Thanks for the tip, chef. Um, <laughs> so, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think these cars are going to struggle. I don't think this car is going to go up in value until there's some clear sense that the economy is going to do something positive. Um, and right now, that certainly isn't the case. Uh, a lot of grumbling out there uh, about things going on. You know, things aren't, it's not the end of the world. We're not there. Um, but it could be, uh, but uh, no, this car is just, I, I think blue chip cars are the ones that are going to be the ones to get uh, a car like this. If you could buy this car for $80,000, whoever that guy was, I think he'd be like pretty happy. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, maybe it doesn't appreciate a whole lot, but that's the darn good safe place to put money because when the economy, uh, you know, recovers in two, five, 10, 15 years, at some point, this car will definitely go up. Um, you know, it's just whether or not you still be able to drive them. That's a whole other conversation. Uh, so yeah, love the car. Car, lo- I would love to uh, have the opportunity to buy one of these. That's kind of the thing when I saw when I saw how beautiful Yuri's was. It's just like, man, I wish I would have got one of these when they were still cheap. Uh, and maybe yeah. there's going to be another moment, but I, I just don't see that happening. I think with inflation, you're just not going to see cars ever really be cheap. I think cars are just either not going to sell at all, and people will just sit on them. Um, and wait till the prices go up or inflation goes up and the prices will go up, continue to go up on these, even though necessarily the value doesn't. So that's all the, how many times have we talked about that? The equation of figuring out value and, and inflation and whether or not the value is actually going up when you counter, uh, the results of inflation. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, yeah. I, At the end of the day, uh, if you've got, you know, if the if the world does end and you're stuck with a beautiful car like this, how oh. nice is it to drive to yeah. the apocalypse in a beautiful, beautiful car yeah. like this one? Uh, what do you guys think of the results of this little Ferrari? Is this uh, is did, did did the seller not know what they were doing? They should have, should they have taken the money and run, or uh, was this car uh, truly? Uh, not realized was this uh, car re- not bid to what the numbers should have really reflected let us know in the comments below and uh, we'll see you tomorrow with another episode of bid nerds nerd! get those nerds